So let's talk about movement and the more traditional kinds of movement, aka exercise, that has been shown to lead to increases in metabolism and fat loss to greater degrees, depending on whether or not, for instance, you're fasted when you do it or not, whether or not you do your cardio first or your resistance training first. And this is, again, in a literature for which there's a lot of controversy, but in digging through all the studies on, on this, we're finally starting to arrive at a consensus of when is best to do exercise and what types of exercise to do if your goal is fat loss. The topic of exercise is a kind of controversial one, not as controversial as nutrition and diet, which we will talk about in a few minutes, but it's a particularly interesting one because different types of exercise engage the musculature of the body and the heart and the lungs in different ways and can have vastly different effects on things like hormones and metabolism, depending on whether or not it's of high intensity, moderate intensity, or low intensity. So rather than think about weight training versus cardiovascular exercise, I think the most simple way, the most fluid way to have this conversation about exercise and fat loss is in terms of three general types of training, whether or not it's done with weights or body weight doesn't really matter. And those are high intensity interval training, something that seems to have gained a lot of popularity in recent years, so-called HIIT, H-I-I-T. So high intensity interval training, sprint interval training. So that's gonna be very high intensity or SIT or moderate intensity continuous training, M-I-C-T. So we've got HIT, SIT and MICT. M-I-C-T. And we can get a little bit more precise if you'd like. Um, I'm not somebody who measures my VO2 max or anything while I exercise. I generally know whether or not I'm doing something I could continue for a very long time or whether or not I'm doing something that uh, I realize is going to be of short duration, high intensity. But if you'd like to map this to VO2 max, SIT, this uh, sprint interval training was defined as all out greater than 100% of VO2 max bursts of activity that last eight to 30 seconds interspersed with less intense recovery periods. So this would be sprinting downfield for eight to 30 seconds, then maybe walking back for about a minute or two and then sprinting again and then continuing. So that would be SIT. HIT, H-I-I-T, is defined as submaximal, so 80 to 100% of VO2 max bursts of activity that last 60 to 240 seconds interspersed with less intense recovery periods. So on a four, standard 400 meter track, just to give this a little bit of a visual, um, you know, one, a four minute mile would be fantastic for most people, although people run faster than that, of course. So that's four 60 second laps, but that's back to back to back. Um, I think in my, you know, in my best shape, or maybe it was in my dreams, I don't recall which, I was able to do 60 seconds around the track, but of course I couldn't get that on the second or third or fourth. If I did, that was um, certainly uh, in fantasy land and not reality. But 60 seconds would be about one rev revolution around the track, maybe maybe 90 seconds, depending on how fast uh, one is running. So 60 to 240 seconds. MICT, okay, this moderate intensity continuous training is steady state cardio, sometimes called zone two cardio these days on the internet which is performed continuously for 20 to 60 minutes at moderate intensity of 40 to 60% of VO2 max, or if you prefer heart rate, 55 to 70% of max heart rate, okay? So we can think about high, medium, and low intensity exercise, although low intensity um, usually means that you could carry on a conversation or maybe you'd have to gasp every, every few steps or so while trying to talk and run. That's, I think, uh, going to be the most useful way to have this conversation that we're having now because there's so many different forms of exercise that people do and intensity is important.